it's Ashley Bookish Rome and as you can see from the title of this video we are going to be looking at the 100 books that every reader should read when they die. So this was originally, first of all, this is the Patreon the Patreon video pick for the month. So every month my patrons have the opportunity to vote on a video that they would like to see me do and this one actually I think this month was a close tie between seeing me react to one of my old videos. Thank god that didn't win. Um, <laughs> and doing the best 100 novels of all time based on the Times article. So what ended up happening is that when I originally thought about this idea I had seen the Times article. I didn't realize how Hated it was that article is easily 10 plus years old so I was like eh and then trying to find another source was a little bit more difficult I didn't want to do the top 100 science fiction fantasy because I felt like that was not going to be pure because I had already seen Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany kind of go over it and I was actually there when she did it via a live stream I think. I think she did a via live stream. So technically I've already seen everything. I kind of gave my opinions so that wouldn't be like an authentic reaction. And so I decided to go with 100 books that we should all read before we die. Now I am going to be looking at Read Seed which Read C, Read C, which is a online community service author publishing thing that is based out of the UK I believe started in like 2013-2014. So I'm going to be using their site to go over the list and I'm going to do a screen grab so hopefully this you know editing actually has figured out how to make this work. So my face probably is going to be turned this way which is I don't like profile at all. I like straight on shots but what can you do? What can- well you know what actually I can do straight on. Okay so this is the actual website that we're looking at and I thought that this intro section was really interesting how they talk about if you read 12 books a year and you're over 25 years old you, you're only going to read 700 books max in your lifetime which as a reader that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of daunting. Okay so the first book that we have on this list and I should probably have said that I will talk a little bit about each book not a lot because this video would end up being extra extra long but I'll tell you if I've read the book if I'm interested in reading the book or if I you know have no plans to pick the book up. So the first one is 1984 by George Orwell which I don't think I even had to read 1984 in high school. I think I got away with not reading 1984 in high school which is really interesting that I didn't have to read it. I read Orwell's other book which was the um, was Animal Farm. I did read that one. So scrolling down. All right so the next one is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. I believe that I read that when I was younger but I just have no interest I think in revisiting that as an adult. I know that it is an important aspect of American literature but I definitely just have my reasons for not saying that that would be on my top 100 books that I want to read when I die. I mean I've read it clearly but it's not one that I'll be like oh yeah I need to get to it before I die. Number three is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle which I have read some of the books from Sherlock Holmes and I believe I own volume one and two of the collection of all the full-length novels and the short stories that was published by Barnes and Nobles. It's like the Barnes and Nobles classics. So I actually have read some of this and I haven't read the complete adventures of um, Sherlock Holmes but I have read some of them and we had a conversation about that on Harley's channel about some of the things that were said in language and the aging of some materials and how still today they're still you know like this line says cultural phenomenon and, and very influential. This one number four is Alchemist by Paulo Coelho and I'm probably not completely right with my accent there but I do want to read The Alchemist. I have not yet read The Alchemist but it is one that I'm super interested in reading because 
I know people who are not active readers who are in my life who've read The Alchemist and it has been one of the most pivotal books for them in their lifetime which I find so interesting considering like I am an avid reader and a lot of people that I know on average read like maybe two three books a year if that and a lot of them have read The Alchemist and they have absolutely enjoyed it and I definitely want to pick up the book that is that inspired the writing of The Alchemist. It's called The Pilgrimage, which I talked a little bit about in one of my Vlogmas videos, but it, it, it influenced his decision to write The Alchemist, and it is one of the top translated books that is on, on my list to read. Number five, we have the, is it Aleph and Other? Stories by George Louis Bour, Bourget, Bourgeau? Bourget. I'm, I know that I am not saying that right so feel free to correct me in the comments and this is one that I actually have never heard of before. It looks like it may be a classic you know it's Penguin Classics but I don't know whether it's a classic or a modern classic I'm not sure the, the publication date but it's a short story collection and this looks pretty interesting I mean the cover looks pretty interesting and it says here um, insight and philosophical wisdom that probably will be interesting I'm gonna have to look that one up number six here Animal Farm I've read it multiple times I believe I've actually read Animal Farm again in the past couple of years maybe the last two to three years because I hadn't read it since I was in high school and it is such an intriguing book like if you've never read Animal Farm or you know if you had to read it in you know secondary school and you didn't enjoy it I always say with some classics go back as an adult and read them because sometimes I feel like they're introduced too early and I don't like that <laughs> because it gives kids such a negative connotation of reading and books in general so I, I wasn't at an age where I think I could understand the significance behind Animal Farm but it definitely is one that I went back and reread and I, I did end up enjoying it. Next one on this list is Aesop's Fables which I have not read the entire collections of Aesop Fables but I think as for some of us as kids, I'm not going to say all of us because I don't want to assume that anybody has been exposed to Aesop's Fables, but I was as a child a lot of them, but I have not read all of them. So this may be one that I would like to go back and explore and see which ones, you know, I would even want to maybe share with my own child. Okay, number eight. We have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Believe it or not, I still have not read this book. And I think I talked about this as one of my classics that I want to read this year. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is one that I've seen many of adaptations of. I've seen the one that was like a straight to movie adaptation with Gene Wilder. I've seen the old Disney one. I've seen the two that had Johnny Depp in them, but I've never read the source material. And for the life of me, I can't tell you why. I think because the book itself is so nonsensical, I feel like it would bother me as a reader. But I don't know because I rather enjoy the adaptations and the nonsensical parts of it. But reading materials and watching adaptations of it are like two very different it's two very different experiences so I don't want to make that assumption but that one is on my list to read. Number nine is Anna Karenina by Leah Tolstoy. I have read Anna Karenina and I enjoyed it. Anna Karenina was the first translated Russian well book that had been tra translated from Russian that I had read so my first Russian lit. I could have just said that and I loved it. <laughs> I believe I gave it like four four and a half stars when I read it and it took me a while this was not something that I just sat down and was like oh yeah I'm just gonna read this willy-nilly and you know I'm just gonna plow through it in a week no it took me six months to read Anna Karenina and I really paced myself with it and I'm glad that I actually did take the opportunity to read it because I think that it was a great story. Is Tolstoy kind of long-winded in areas? Absolutely there's like this whole section about one of the characters cutting grass but it was the most beautiful writing. <laughs> it was like, why am I enjoying this man to talk about someone cutting grass? And it's not it's not going to be for everybody, but it is one that I, I did rather enjoy. Let's see here. Number 10, we have Anna Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. I haven't read it. I know that's crazy, but I'm just, 
I'm not interested. Do I feel like it is a classic? Yeah. Do I feel like it? it's worth reading? Not so much. <laughs> It's not so much. Not for me personally. I just don't think I have any interest in it. I know that everyone has been really, really into the adaptation that is on Netflix. I just, I, oh, my mom loves them. My, my mom's not a reader, but she loves Anne Green Gables. Do I know why? Absolutely, absolutely not. Okay, number 11 is As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. All right. <laughs> so I've, I've had to read Faulkner in, in school before and Faulkner is very much so like stream of consciousness which is a hit or miss for me. I think that I have to be in the mood and I'm not always in the mood so Faulkner is just not always like up there for me. Am I gonna push to read Faulkner before I die? Probably not. So I wouldn't necessarily have this on my list, but I can understand why people like Faulkner a lot. 15, Beloved by Toni Morrison. <laughs> Y'all know how you feel about Toni Morrison. I read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison and it tore me to shreds. And it was such a trauma-filled experience. I have not been able to pick up Morrison since then. And this year I kind of wanted to work up the, the courage to read more of Morrison because she's just, she's an amazing human. I mean, outside of her writing, just, you know, reading about her and, you know, listening to the speeches or the essays that she has written. It, it's, she's a phenomenal human. She was a phenomenal human and with a brilliant mind, with a mind that intimidates me every time that I talk about her and I think about her. But yes, Beloved is one that I would definitely love to get to. Number 13, we have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, which I have seen part of the movie adaptation for The Book Thief. And I've read Marcus Zusak before. He had an adult book which is the, the title of it is escaping me right now I actually I I can't remember the name of it I, I could open up a tab and just google it but okay so I actually read I am the messenger by Marcus Suzak that was the book that I ended up reading by him so I have read him before but I have not read the book the which I heard is so incredibly heartbreaking but such a beautiful book and it's told from the perspective of death which yeah, takes place during World War Two, and it's about a little girl who, you know, finds power in books. Brave New World by Alice Huxley is one that, that I have read within the past five or six years. It is a book that is before its time in terms of what it was looking at about humanity, I think. It's not a perfect book. I think that there are some problematic aspects to it. Like if you were to read it in 2021, you would find some issues with the book. But in terms of a science fiction book, looking at human behavior from when it was published, I think it was in the 30s, correct me if I'm wrong, it was above its time because there are some aspects of this book that you can kind of see present today. So very very interesting very very interesting book. the number 15 is the brothers karamazov by dostoevsky and i have a copy of this book i think i can't exactly remember but it would be on the shelf in my room if i do have a copy of it but this is a another translated work russian work that i have not gotten my hands on yet but it is one that i do want to read i do want to really really read this one number 16 catch 22 by joseph heller i have read catch 22 it's been years since i read catch 22 i believe i read this one in high school and i really don't remember much about catch 22 so is it one that's high on my priority list probably not because I don't remember enjoying it not to say that I wouldn't enjoy it now as an adult but it's not on the top of my list number 17 the catcher in the rye by JD Salinger I've read that one in high school as well which is supposed to be looking at you know youth but it's not high on my list either in terms of reread 
number 18, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I have read this one. I've seen adaptations of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory from the Gene Wilder version, which was done in the 60s, to the Johnny Depp version. I prefer the Gene Wilder one. I think that the one that Johnny Depp did was a little too whimsical. I didn't really care for it at all, but it is good, I mean, in terms of like source material, but I read that when I was younger. I haven't reread that one as an adult, I don't believe. Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, so good. I recently reread that one, I mean, meaning like in the last three or four years I've read that one because I had to read it for my children's lit class. It is so depressing. <laughs> People never talk about how depressing Charlotte's Web is. That is a depressing book and I've seen a lot of the movie adaptations of Charlotte's Web as well but it is one of the most pivotal books for children's literature and it is a Newbery Honor Award winner which is important. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. I have never read The Call of the Wild. I have no interest in reading it. I don't, <laughs> don't really care. Uh, Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. I've heard a lot about Clockwork Orange. I am on the fence about it in terms of whether I would include it on my list of 100 that I would be interested in reading. Number 22, The Code of Woodsters by P.G. Woodhouse. Now, I've heard a lot about P.G. Woodhouse and Jeeves, but I have not gotten the opportunity to read a Jeeves book. I think I may have a Jeeves book, but I can't remember because I think I may have unhauled it at a point where I was like, I've had this on my shelf for a long time. I probably need to get rid of it if I have no intention on reading it anytime soon. So I may not have that. The Collected Edgar Allan Poe, or The Collected of Edgar Allan Poe by Edgar Allan Poe. I have read some of Edgar Allan Poe. I was inspired to read some of it, I think my junior year of high school. So I actually do have a bind up of the tales and the poems of Edgar Allan Poe in my classic shelf. So I haven't read everything, but I have read some of, of that stuff. 24, The Color Purple by Alice Walker, which of course there's been a lot of conversation lately about Alice Walker and her anti-Semitic uh, beliefs and by backing someone who is known for such behavior. The Color Purple is a very pivotal novel and it brings forth once again that conversation about separating art from artist and censorship. Uh, clearly this is a important book. It is a book that has been highly regarded in terms of awards it's won. It's received the Pulitzer Prize. So I'm not going to get into that conversation but it is a good example of having dialogue about that conversation which is you know interesting because The Color Purple is one of the most impactful, impactful books that I have read in, in my lifetime. Number 25 is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I have read Coraline and I have watched the movie adaptation and I think it is a great children's book. I think the movie is a great adaptation. It is a great example of Neil Gaiman's ability to write. The Count of Monte Cristo, which everyone knows I've been trying to read for like the past <laughs> two years by Alexandre Dumas. This is definitely a great tale of revenge. Number 27 is Crime and Punishment, which I'm very surprised about this now because they now have two books on this list by the same author. I always get weary when lists start to do things like that because that could have been a space for another author or another book. So I think that, you know, limiting it to be one book per author is always a wise decision instead of convoluting a list with multiple authors. Also, you know, come to note, we are not seeing a wide range of diversity necessarily in this list. I am happy to see translated works and authors of color, but you know, more is always good. <laughs> 28, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which I believe has good autism representation. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but I think that the autis autism um, representation is generally accepted as being positive representation and a lot of people do enjoy this book. This is one that I do want to read that I have not gotten my hands on just yet. Next I have here, I'm almost past it, The Death of Artemo Cruz. 
and this is one that, that I actually have never heard of before so I need to look into more about this one this is a translated work and it says here that it's a milestone in the boom of Latin American literature and I have not heard of that one before so that is one to check out same thing with number 30 Diary of a Madman and other stories I this is actually pointing out how much I need to which I already know this because I've talked about it I mentioned how much I need to invest more time into translated works because here you can see I'm not as familiar with as many translated works as I think I should be like this one coming up this is a, a Chinese writer and it's been translated and I have never heard of it before looking at this list number 31 and Frank the diary of the young girl which I have read I think I had to read the diary of a young girl in middle school which it, it's it opens up a lot of conversations about history i'm not sure you know going back because i haven't read it in such a long time i don't know whether i was prepared to read that in middle school and i'm talking about myself i'm not talking about all middle school kids or everybody's reading level i'm just talking about me personally i don't know if i was at the point where i was ready to read that but i would that's a book i would like to revisit the divine comedy but dante you know I feel like the Divine Comedy is one of those classics that a lot of people have read and I'm it's one of those ones once again that I'm kind of on the fence about I don't know if I would want to read it now or not I've heard so much about it I've read books with a lot of allusions to the Divine Comedy but maybe maybe I I think that it's it's an interesting work Don Quixote which yes this is one that I want to read I think this is a pretty long work if I'm not mistaken <laughs> I think this is a pretty long work I can't remember how long it is but I think it's long but it is one that I I do want to get to Dracula by Bram Stoker is one that I have read and I like Dracula. I think Dracula is definitely not everybody's cup of tea. It's definitely gothic in a way that's more so atmospheric than on the page actual representation of gothic beings if that makes sense. You you don't get as much vampire as you think you're going to get in Dracula and I always think that that's important for people to know that because I think a lot of people read Dracula with the expectation that you know the vampire is going to be on page like the entire time and he definitely is not and I think a lot of movie adaptations screw that up for people when they go back to read the source material because it's not as dramatic or as as super super dark in terms of characters as you would think it definitely has a gothic atmosphere about it that makes it a creepy read and I haven't read that one in a few years but I did enjoy it when I, I did read it Emma by Jane Austen I, I absolutely adore Jane Austen I've read three of her works I need to go back and finish the, the rest of her catalog. Emma is one of the books that I have not read by her and one of the books that I do not own by her. So Emma is definitely on my list of books that I would like to read. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury is one that I read in high school and one that I really did enjoy. I think that it is a an interesting body of work. There was a adaptation that was done a while ago of Fahrenheit 451. I haven't watched it yet because I wanted to read the book but you know how time and schedules and intentions go. You mean to get to stuff and then you end up just not getting to it. Going it too fast on my screen here. Let's see here. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have not read Frankenstein and it is one that I do want to read. I have not read it. I am currently reading a comic that is a continuation of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley by Victor Laval and I think that I should go go through <laughs> and and read it and get to know a little bit more about Mary Shelley as an author. The Giver by Lois Lowry. I have not read The Giver. I don't really have interest in reading The Giver. Believe it or not it is a Newbery medal winner but just not I'm not interested. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. <sighs> very very pitiful book. Pivotal not pitiful not pitiful. Pivotal book for a lot of people in their childhood. The Golden Compass. I I'm 
not interested in it. Um, I did not realize that it was a retelling of Paradise Lost. That is interesting, which I feel like I heard someone talking about it in terms of it having a lot of religious connotations to it. That now makes sense. I did not realize that that's what it was based upon. Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown. This is one that I read all the time because Baby actually has a copy of Good Night Moon which we regularly read. This one is really good because it actually includes all of the phonetic sounds that exist in the English language. So if you're interested in helping your young ones learn every phonetic sound that does exist in English, Good Night Moon is the book to use for that. Uh, that's a little thing that we tell people as librarians that that exists. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I have read it. Dickens is an author that I've been reading to, meaning to revisit for a while. Have I done it? No, absolutely not. But I loved Great Expectation Expectations because of Miss Miss Havisham. Is it Havisham? Is that her name? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, the Great Gatsby is one that I have read multiple times, and this one just went on public domain. So now all the adaptations of The Great Gatsby are are currently coming out. It is not everybody's cup of tea. Some people just can't get down with The Great Gatsby. I like the adaptation of The Great Gatsby that has Leonardo DiCaprio in it. <laughs> it's just, the soundtrack for that one is really, really good. 43 is Grim Fairy Tales. I've read some of them. I have not read all of them. I have a collection of them and I was talking about that on the classics that I wanted to read. It's huge. It's one of those things where you read like a story here and there. You don't sit down and try to accomplish to read the whole thing in one sitting. Okay, Gulliver's Travels is 44. I read this as a child. I also remember reading the Wishbone adaptation. Or you know what? I may have just read the Wishbone adaptation and thought that I've read the real thing. I may not have actually read the real thing before, but I know that I did read the Wishbone adaptation of it and it was really good. Will I go back and read it now? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Hamlet, I have read. I do want to go back and reread Shakespeare stuff. I have a project going on with one of Shakespeare's works right now, but we'll save that for later. 46 The Handmaid's Tale. I have not read that one yet, but I've seen two episodes of the adaptation, the TV show, and I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. 47 Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. I definitely can see why this is on this list. We know how she is as a person. The text itself, the book itself, has made a powerful imprint in the world of publishing in children's literature as well as YA literature. Historically it, it does have an imprint. I personally believe that it's time to start allowing other books to make pathways for being pivotal in terms of children and fantasy and magic. And I think a good example of that is Amari and the Night Brothers, which is a legacy that I'll be passing on to my daughter. And not, you know, not this. This was my time. Um, this was powerful for me, but I don't need it to be passed on to another generation. I can I can acknowledge what it's done without, you know, uh, continuing or trying to continue to push its legacy. It's made its legacy. Number 48, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I had to read that in high school and, you know, uh, you know, works back then, y'all, were, were tough. They're just tough in terms of content and how it's aged and Heart of Darkness is one definitely that has, is aged. And I won't go back and, and revisit that one <laughs> at all. So this one, here's to you. Is it Jesusa? I have not heard of this one before. And this appears to be, I believe that this may be another translated work. I can't tell by the title if it is, because usually it says like translated by. And I cannot tell. It may not be. But this is one I have not heard of which I'm not, you know, I'm not surprised by that. 
The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I believe that this one is important to the science fiction community. I've heard about the movie. I've heard about the book. I know how pivotal it is. Am I going to read it? No. I, I just, I'm just not interested in that, to be honest. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Have I read it? <laughs> I have not read. I think I... I may have read a lot of it as a child, The Hobbit. I think I have because I remember having a uh, a copy of it, but I can't tell you right now as an adult, we're talking like 20, 30 years later, if I read it or not. I, I said 20 or 30 years. It's not 30 years later. 20 or 25 years later. I, I, I can't tell you if I for sure read it because I don't remember much of The Hobbit. So that being said, do I want to read it? Yes. Am I fearful of it being super dry? <laughs> yes. Have I seen the movies? No, because I heard that The Hobbit movies were trash, but I did watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It was one of my favorite fantasy movies growing up. Holes by Louis Satchar. I read Holes in 2019 again for the first time in a very very long time. Love the movie adaptation, love the book itself. They did a nice job with the movie adaptation y'all. A very very nice job because I remember reading the book it's actually just right after I had the baby and I was like okay I, you know I want to read some children's lit and I picked this one up and listen it is good it did they kept very very true to the text. I was very very surprised. So if you like the movie, I would recommend picking up the book. It's not much variation, to be honest with you. There are a couple things that were different, but the writers and producers did a nice job with that one. Okay, Hopscotch. And this is one that I have never heard of before. And this one seems to be like a choose your own story type of thing. Because here it's saying that it has a suggested reading guide which prompts readers to jump around various chapters and makes 99 of the 150 ch 55 chapters expendable. That is interesting. Am I intrigued? Absolutely. 54 The Iliad by Homer. I have not read this in its totality. I actually was reading it with someone I was tutoring when I was in college. So <laughs> as a result, I have read part of the Iliad. I have not read the entire epic poem. Invisible Man by Rath Ellison. I have read this one and I think this is such an important black classic to read. It's been a moment or not a moment. It's been a minute since I have read this one. I do want to go back and, and reread this one. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I have not read, but I do own a copy. Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. I've read the Wishbone version of that. <laughs> and again, so I haven't, I haven't read that one. I think I do have a copy of that one. So that is one that I possibly want to get to. Les Mis by Victor Hugo. I have a copy of that one. Clearly, I have not read it yet. I want to read it. It's one that I talk about a lot. It actually is sitting across the room because I need it to be a constant reminder every day that, you know, I have to make that happen. <laughs> Life of Pi by Jan Martel, which is winner of the Man Booker Prize. Everyone hates this book. I love it. I thought Life of Pi was Chef's Kiss. I thought the movie adaptation was Chef's Kiss. It's been a minute since I've read it, but it was so good. The ending, so good. A lot of people don't agree, but it's one that I really enjoyed. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, a pivotal children's fantasy book. I've read it before. I have not finished the Chronicles of Narnia series. I think I've read four out of the seven. I will finish eventually. I may have to start from the beginning because I don't remember every single detail. I believe I was reading them in publishing order. It was, it would, you know, it is what it is. I don't, I don't necessarily feel like I'm like oh my gosh you know the Chronicles of Narnia it's it's not that for me but I do understand why it has been that for a lot of people. The Little Prince is one that I have not read but people love it. People love The Little Prince. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I am going to be doing something this year with Little Women so this is one that I have not read 
that I will be reading and I am interested in seeing the adaptations. Lolita by Nabokov uh, is such a controversial book. Uh, I don't know if I could stomach it and that's just me personal. Like I don't think that I would be able to make it through Lolita so I'm sure there are people who have read it and, and have I don't want to even say appreciated the book but have maybe appreciated their experience in reading it but I don't think Lolita is one that I can mentally get through myself. Lord of the Rings I've already talked about that because you know I I haven't I haven't I haven't read it yet but I have seen the movie adaptations. 65 Love in the Time of Cholera which is one that I talked about by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I've read one of his short stories and really enjoyed it and this was on my list of classics that I wanted to read in 2021. It is a translated work. I think it has some magical realism aspects of it tied in so it's one that I'm looking forward to reading. Madame Bovary by Gustave Laubert. Oh I went too far y'all I apologize. Madame Bovary is one that I think that I own. I I'm still on the fence and if I don't read it soon which is like a lot of books that I own right now that if I don't pick up soon I think it's time to consider an unhaul but I think I was interested in Madame Bovary when I heard a little bit about the adaptation but I don't know I'm just I'm eh. 67 Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka I have read The Metamorphosis and it is a very strange book but it is it is a genius piece of work. Um, I think that it's one that I want to reread. I think I included this in my list of either classics to read this year or in my video where I talked about books to reread in 2021 and I flew through the list again. I apologize. Let's see here. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I have a copy of this one. I, I have not read it yet. It is dense from what I heard especially the conversations around like the whale related stuff so we we shall we shall see if I get to that one. 69 Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. That I have heard is very stream of consciousness like I said before. I am picky when it comes to stream of consciousness so I don't know if I ever will get to Mrs. Dalloway. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. <sighs> I have not I have not read an Agatha Christie book in a very very long time. I you know this is once again this is another on the fence. I may or may not get to that book. We will see. 71 of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I have read that. It is so sad. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Steinbeck overall but I have read of Mice and Men and I, I enjoyed it but it it's not an easy one. The Old Man in the Sea by Her Ernest Hemingway. I know how much Ernest Hemingway is re respected in in the world of literature but nah, I don't know if I'm interested in that. Um, Oliver Twist so this is a duplicate again. I have not read Oliver Twist but I know the story of Oliver Twist. I've read adaptations of Oliver Twist or have had themes related to Oliver Twist. I've seen movie adaptations but um, I have not actually picked up the source material so yes. Next I have here The 100 Years of Solitude, another duplicate, which I do have a copy of 100 Years of Solitude, but I, I'm, I don't like when lists do duplicates because it could have been read for or it could have been a placeholder for something else. Number 75 is 1001 Nights by Unknown. I've heard a lot about it of course I think everyone has but it's one that I specifically just like have not picked up yet. A Passage to India by E. M. Forster. Uh, uh, I don't know. I know also with E. M. Forster like important author to literature. Don't know if I would be interested in specifically picking that one up. Uh, Pedro Paramo. I've never heard of this one. It's, intro it's introduced by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This once again appears to be maybe a translated work and you know I've got to get so much better about my translated works. So much better. The Phantom Toll Booth is one that we talk about all the time in Children's Lit and I have not read it yet 
it is one that I do need to read and I have another project in mind so I think that one may be happening a little bit sooner than I think. Pippi Longstocking, seen so many adaptations of Pippi. Disney had this really nice adaptation of Pippi like back in the day. I don't know if anybody remembers it. It was a cartoon version and I really like the music. Don't know what happened to that. Number 80, I haven't read it though, by the way. <laughs> Number 80, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I have read this. I've read this one a couple of times. I've seen so many adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. Love it, love it, love it. I think a lot of people like Pride and Prejudice. I've read a lot of Pride and Prejudice adaptations or books that have um, Pride and Prejudice attachments. The Remains of the Day by Kasu Ishiguro, which I think for a lot of people has been a hit or a miss. I know a lot of people who have enjoyed The Remains of the Day and others who have not enjoyed it. It is a Booker Prize winner. Uh, I do want to read something by Kazu Ishiguro. Uh, whether it's The Remains of the Day or not, I don't know. If you have any ideas about where I should start, let me know. 82, Romeo and Juliet, one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. It is a tragedy. Not a, it's not romantic at all, but it is one of my favorite plays by William Shakespeare. It's sad because every time I read it, I'm hoping for a different ending, knowing that it's not going to end that way, which... Yeah, a series of unfortunate events. I've read the entire series, but I need to do a reread because I haven't read them in, in I haven't read them in so long. 84, The Shadow of the Wind, and I apologize for scrolling too far by Carlos Ruiz Safon. I have not read this. Not good. <laughs> not good at all but it's one that I do want to read 85 Slaughterhouse 5 by Kurt Vonnegut I have not read it um <sighs> I'm on the fence about this one about whether I really really want to read it The Sound of the Mountain this is one that, that I actually have never heard of um but from the description it sounds like it could be a hard read but possibly a very very good read. The Stranger by Albert Camus. I have tried reading The Stranger before and I just couldn't do it so I think that this probably is going to be a no but I was younger when I tried to read it. You know older that may change but I don't know. The Tale of Genji. I have heard of this one. I have not read it but I have heard of it. And it is one that I am interested in reading one day. Things Fall Apart. I actually have a copy of this one. <laughs> and I have not gotten to um, this. It is a first in a trilogy like it says on here. And I think that it is a very, very, very important book. But it is one that I do want to get to. The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. I wish it would have... For these ones that they duplicated, they could have they could have picked so many different things, to be honest. I have read The Three Musketeers before, though. To Kill a Mockingbird, number 91. Definitely understand why. I've read that one. It's gotten a pull of surprise. It is definitely a lot of people's favorite um, in terms, I think, more of a modern classic that people have loved. I heard the second book is no good. I don't want to taint my experience of To Kill a Mockingbird by reading that second book. Just so you know. Treasure Island. Have I heard of Treasure Island? Yes. Have I read this? This is <laughs> wishbone adaptation of it yes I, I have have I read the source material no but it is it is one that I think might be interesting to check out again Ulysses by James Joyce mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. I've tried reading Ulysses and it's not for me um it's not for me at all <laughs> He goes another duplicate 94's War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy this is one that I do want to read because of my enjoyment of um, Anna Karenina. 95 is Watership Down by Richard Adams. This is a classic that a lot of children have enjoyed. It's one that still gets checked out a lot at the library. I have not read Watership Down but it's, it's coming. 96 is Winnie the Pooh. No we all I have not read Winnie the Pooh and I don't have any interest reading Winnie the Pooh. I didn't really care for Winnie the Pooh growing up. I don't want to read a book about Winnie the Pooh. I know where Winnie the Pooh came from. I've read a couple of nonfiction picture books about it but I don't think I'll ever pick it up. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Yes because this is one of those classic mystery books that I, I've heard a lot of interesting things about that I do want to pick up. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. 
I have read this one actually in the past two or three years I've read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz which it's interesting seeing adaptations of it and reading that book and knowing like the entire series as a whole. 99 is A Wrinkle in Time, one of the greatest children fantasy books out there. I have not read the rest of the series. It is it's not a quartet. I think there might be actually five books. If there's not five books it's a quartet but I have not read it. I mean I have not read the rest of the books. I have read this one and I watched the new adaptation which and then I've watched the old adaptation which <laughs> and the old adaptation was like a straight to movie or straight to TV type of movie adaptation which you know those could be hit or miss. And then the last one number of hundred is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte which I have not read this one either. So I have not read anything by the Bronte sisters. I hope I didn't call her Bronte. I think I said Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte is Bronte. <laughs> Sorry if I did that. So yeah, I have not read that, but my intention is to read the Bronte Sisters soon. All right, y'all. So those are 100 books that uh, Reed Seed said that you should read before you die. And I mean, it was an okay list. I think they should have stayed away from duplicates. I think that they could have definitely used a little bit more modern works for it to be written in 2019. I think there was a lot of things that they had to choose from that they didn't include on this list. There was no representation of middle grade or young adult really. It was very classics heavy which I think we could appreciate classics both you know old school classics and modern classics but you know I think when you do lists like this you have to be very mindful of balance. I do like that a lot of children's lit was included on in here. I think a lot of times when these lists are made children's lit tend has a tendency to get left out but you know I think they definitely could have chosen a lot more things. There are, uh, you know, a broader spectrum of books to choose from considering when this list was published. But there was, you know, good uh, representation of translated works, children's lit, um, modern classics, old school classics, things that have been published within the last, you know, five to ten years. But, you know, what's everybody's gonna look at a list and be like, yeah, you could have done this, you could have done that, you could have done this, you know, that's just the way that it goes. But let me know in the comment box below if you've read any of these books. I'll be sure to include the link of this website down in the description box below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're looking to see more content from me, click the subscribe button. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the links will be down in the description box below. If you're interested in following me on social media, all the links will be down in the description box as well. And I'll be back with another video soon.